Organized labor in Nigeria is insisting on a new minimum wage of 250,000 Naira, rejecting government's offer of about 62,000 Naira and 100,000 Naira starvation wages, as they have called it. The impasse may lead to a potential strike, with labor demanding a higher wage and the government expressing concerns about sustainability. As negotiations resume today, the outcome of the decisions to be taken will have significant implications for workers and the Nigerian economy. So this morning, to help us talk more about this, we have Mukhtar Mohammed, CEO of Share Investments Limited. Uh, Mukhtar, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you, Leiko. Uh, the way you're smiling like this, seems as though you have the capacity to pay about 250,000 Naira for your workers because, of course, you're a business owner in Nigeria. Well, and that would depend on what the government decided to do for me. Mm. Uh, you see, most businesses will say, look, we, we, we might be able to afford it, but again, the government will have to come through for businesses. Businesses are going through a lot at this time, high interest rate, um, looking at tariff, electrical tariff, especially if you're in the manufacturing sector, um, if you're in the educational sector, the same thing is happening. So uh, again, exchange rate volatility. So the private sector itself is having a lot of challenges based on what uh, the decisions of government, how the decision have had a negative impact on their businesses. So that is why as it stands now, if you insist on that new minimum wage, um, based on what the government is saying they should pay, the federal sector will be able to afford it. But again, there will have to be what I call um, losses of jobs because a lot of companies will have to, to downsize to be able to pay and then put in more work in a, a more job for others that maybe some one person will be doing three or four people job, which is naturally not good for the for, for their health. So mm -hmm. that's why the organized private sector is saying, look, labor try to be considerate in the, what you want us to, to do, not just don't don't be so rigid that. This is the amount that we must pay. We can decide to pay those amounts, but it might lead to job, job losses. For the federal government, I don't think they have any reason not to pay because, again, if you look at the, the extra vagrant lifestyles of the government thus far, $22 billion to build the vice president resident, um, $90 billion for high operation. Political appointees are still doing the same thing they were doing last year with this year. And then you are telling the government telling us to tie our belt, and then you see those people that you appointed doing worse than that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think for political appointees, they don't have any excuse. They, I mean, I mean, I mean, for the government, they don't have any excuse. They need to pay. And if they want the private sector to pay, they also need to come up with policy. A situation whereby um, import duties are going high by the day. Today is 140, tomorrow is 148. They need to look at that. Those are part of the things that the private sector is saying. Look, if you decide that we have to pay this minimum wage, then there must be area that the government is giving in to us. If the government refuses to do that, if we have to pay, then there may have to be job losses. Uh, but then uh, the organized labor has actually reduced their demand from four ninety four thousand to two hundred and fifty thousand naira. Uh, don't you think that is a bit? Um, uh, how do I put it now? Uh, on their own part, it is something that they've actually considered and they feel, okay, this is something that the Nigerian government should be able to pay and the OPSs should be able to also follow through. Like I said, um, labor, labor should know the times that we are. Um, a lot of businesses are shutting down. Um, the multinationals also are leaving the country. This is due to lack of credit and the high interest rate and the exchange rate volatility. So uh, coming to 250, I mean, it's, see, the challenge I have is that government have not been sincere with labor. That's the truth. Let's be factual about this. Uh, let's call it spill. It's spill. Government have not been true. They have, have not been really serious or truthful or open to labor. Because uh, the situation whereby today you are offering 60,000, tomorrow you are giving 62,000. It shows lack of seriousness, lack of diligence, taking the people for a ride. So government need to be serious about coming in to negotiate with labor. You, 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 minimum wage is about 30,000. Hmm. Hello, Mukhtar. 
I think um, we just um, lost connection with uh, Mukhtar right there. There was a freeze uh, while I was talking. But we will still continue to engage him and um, get more responses from him as uh, so we look at the issue around a minimum wage being demanded for by the organized labor. And uh, the organized labor is saying uh, 250000 would be appropriate uh, looking at the um, inflation levels in the country and the uh, cost of living crisis that a lot of Nigerians have had to deal with. Well, the Nigerian government actually increased um, what it can pay from 60,000 to about 62,000 naira, saying that anything above that would be unsustainable and it would balloon the expenditure um, of government. Now, we'll quickly go on a short break and see how well we can uh, bring Mutar back online to continue to talk more about this. He also talked about the sincerity of government as regards the negotiation, how it has gone on between uh, the government and um, the organized labor in terms of um, what what they can actually do, most especially when a lot of expenses have gone into um, the building of uh, a vice president's quarters, uh, the purchase of SUVs uh, for lawmakers, increasing um, salaries of the judiciary, and of course that of the legislative arm. So why is it that the government is saying that it cannot pay or sustain an amount that um, the organized labor is actually requesting for? Maybe a printing down in different areas in terms of expenditure can help plow that amount into um, the payment of salaries um, for the workers. And that is the major um, point of argument, of arguments rather, uh, by those who are actually clamoring for an increase in minimum wage. Uh, Mukhtar Mohamed, I want to believe that you're, you're there now. Can you hear me? Well, there is a possibility that industrial action might return in Nigeria, and that is because uh, um, labor unions and the Nigerian government have not been able to come to a consensus of what is payable, on what is payable as regards the minimum wage. It is 62,000 from government as against the labor union demanding for 250,000 naira. Well, the organized private sector are also saying that um, the labor unions should be reasonable. And um, of course, the labor unions are saying, no, you need to pay what Nigerians can make do with if truly poor people should breathe in the country. We've been talking to uh, Mukhtar Mohammed, CEO Asher Investment Limited, and has been given, um, of course, his summation as regards this. N now, Mukhtar, while you were talking, uh, you talked about what is possible, what can be achieved. But then we still have a government in the subnationals, the state governors, who say that they cannot afford to even pay 60,000 naira. I think the highest um, that I saw that um, Lagos State's government uh, has proposed to pay 75,000, and that is the highest. Um, 70,000 in some areas, some governments, uh, some, some state governments are even still paying 30,000, 40,000. And you know, it's something that they're saying that, hey, if we are to meet statutory provisions, then we should be able to peg the amount at a price, or at an amount rather, that can be sustained. Otherwise, the entire study uh, provisions will just be going to salaries and there will be nothing left for infrastructural development. So by the time we put all these together, um, Mukhtar, what do you think is tenable and realizable as regards to what can be paid? I'm glad to leave the governors out of this. They are not, they are, they're, they're taking the workers and Nigerians for a ride. Um, a report came out whereby the governors have not denied it, whereby the governors have spent about three years republicing and seen allowances and all that things they have been doing. So the governors are, not, are basically the bent of Nigerian problem. They can't tell me they cannot pay that amount. They have to also need to begin to look at their excesses because the government have been involved in a lot of excesses. So they need to begin to look at it. So I am not of the opinion that they cannot uh, uh, they cannot pay, but I'm thinking that they are virtually are not ready to pay those amount to the Nigerian worker, which is very, very sad as far as I'm concerned. So um, uh, they, they're proposing about 58,000 Naira. I, I don't agree to it, Lake, on for this singular fact. This is a government that, as we stand now, Lake, the, the state government, the local government have collected more funding than any tier of government. Thus far, they've collected so much in terms of funding since President Tinubu came to power. What have they been using that money for? Hmm. 
-hmm. If you are looking at Lagos State proposing 75,000 Naira, it's still, it's still small. The same Lagos State government that is proposing 75,000 Naira a lake on just yesterday or during the uh, last week or the beginning of this week, then they, 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 the transport uh, repeats that they were paying for uh, people on traveling to transport, uh, government um, owned transportation, the BRT, they say they were going to withdraw it and that will increase the price by 25% already for those uh, uh, civil servants that are coming to bus rapid system and others also in the um, uh, uh, private sector. So you see that uh, the government is not, the governors especially are not being sincere. They didn't get themselves involved in this negotiation until the last minute. And even with that, they would send, they sent um, the, 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 the DG of the Nigerian government forum. It was when labor was on strike that the, the chairman of the Nigerian uh, government forum, that is the governor of uh, 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 Imo State, Hope Zodima, joined, the, joined the, 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 the negotiation table. So they have not really been um, really taking Nigerian workers serious in case of their demand. So I am of the opinion that um, when you look at the governors, they are just not taking. I, 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 I give you an instant now. The federal government is paying a, a wage award of 35,000. Added to the minimum wage of 30,000, that's already 65,000. Hmm. And the same government is now suggesting that uh, they, are, they cannot pay more than 62,000. Are you going to reduce the 3,000 that you have been paying them thus far in the name of wage? Award? So, the government needs to be serious. The president said, I'm going to pay above 60,000 minimum wage, and the above 60,000 minimum wage is to be proposing 62,000. I think government need to be serious, take labor serious. I think what happened was that the government never thought that the labor strike would be effective, and that's what they got. So um, I, 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 I'm, I, I still think that government should be should be able to afford a living wage. But when you tell me about the living wage, I don't think 250 is affordable uh, for government or for the private sector. I think the Nigerian Labor Congress should be still be looking between 90 to 100,000. Mm. Then what government should do is to begin to, like I said, take a bite of their revenue and begin to look at structural ways to increase the minimum. What I mean structural ways, maybe some of these salaries will not be taxed for the next six months, for the next one year. Then use that to stabilize the economy in terms of high cost of goods, services, food, items. So well, by doing that, you're taking a bite of your revenue for the next one year. And when you look at the taxes that will not be paid, Bam, but then you might be seeing a, a labor collecting over 100 and 150,000. So that could be a danger. But what the government is so focused on um, dealing with labor based on um, based on payment, I mean, cash, not looking at the structural side. I think since government say in terms of cash wise, we might not be able to afford it, just like what they did in terms of giving the wage award. They should also be thinking of other ways, structural ways to add up that will create value for the uh, increase the earning capability for the Nigerian workers. But for the private sector, they also need to look at the private sector for the private sector to be able to pay. Then government policy that are driving goods and services high need to be reviewed so that the financial sector, like they say, let the poor breathe. The financial sector also could should also be begin to breathe. And once they begin to breathe and the economy start, they will be able to mm. pay. And the challenge government have is that 80% of Nigerians are employed by the private sector. So you need to begin to look at that. And if the private sector decide to do right sizing or downsizing, then there's a challenge. It's, there's a hmm. big problem in the Nigerian economy. A big problem. Uh, so at this time that um, the labor unions and of course um, the Nigerian government are at loggerheads as uh, as regards what they can agree on when it comes to this minimum wage, would you now at this point advocate that the strike should continue? Because we know that negotiations are ongoing and it doesn't seem as though um, there would be uh, an agreement to be made. Uh, we know that when there's an industrial uh, action, revenues are lost. Both across board, both private, public sector, everybody loses money. And that would, in a way, discourage uh, investment inflows into the country. So would you say that, I mean, the strike should continue until something concrete is agreed? I don't agree that the strike continues. Um, as long as government is open to negotiation, I think Labour should continue negotiating with government. But government needs to show sincerity. Mm. A situation whereby labor comes to the table to have a discussion and then government is offering them 2,000 naira, then they go back and come back, government is offering them 3,000 naira, doesn't show seriousness. Government should be able to say, you know what, this is what we can afford, this is the amount, labor will say, this is what we can take. Then they find a midway, not a situation whereby you're adding 1,000 today, 2,000 tomorrow, next tomorrow you're adding 3,000. 
that does not give confidence to negotiation. So mm. government need to show seriousness. All of a sudden, the tripartite committee is, is submitting its report to the secretary of the federal to the state government. And here we are had uh, uh, President Tinubu saying that uh, the, the minister for finance should should should, should come up with uh, within forty eight hours. Yeah, should come up with a proposal. And then the tripartite committee again. Is now coming up with his own that is submitted to the Niger to the secretary to the government of the federation. Then he will. so it shows that there is no synergy. There seems mm. to be on different wavelengths. So that does not give confidence to the system. If you ask, if the president needed to meet, he needed to meet with the tripartite committee. Let the tripartite committee come up with their wage be based on based on their negotiation with labor. Then you can pass it to the minister of finance. The minister of finance will look at it, and the president will say, "Can we increase this based on what this?" Is? So then you look at the cost implication, and then you can say, "Okay, tribal committee, take this to Nigerian Labour Congress. Yeah. Tell them that this is what we can pay." This. Also, it's not even my tribal committee submitted to the secretary of the government federation. It takes it to the federal executive council. The federal executive council will now approve. You take it to the senate. And, even if government really needs to be serious, the Senate should also be involved. Either the chairman of this uh, revenue mobilization committee or the chairman of the revenue mobilization committee should be there. The chairman of the Senate committee on the uh, wage increment or whatever should also be in this negotiation so that mm -hmm. by the time uh, the green light is given by, we should have a record timing in passing this legislation into law, just like they did in the national anthem. Well, uh, we don't know for how long this particular matter will drag on uh, between the government and the labor unions, but the bottom line is inflation is biting hard on Nigerians. The cost of living is skyrocketing. It's quite hard for people to actually live by. We know how much staple foods are being sold in the market right now, so something needs to be done and to be done in earnest. Uh, Mukhtar Mohammed, CEO, Asher Investment Limited, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. My pleasure, Lincoln. Thank you for having me.